Hello everyone. I am Okayama from the Chiba University. Please wait a second. Uh, um, so today I would like to talk about how Chiba University has been um, have been doing student-based management of the ecology and also I'm glad that I could be talking here right now. First, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, in 2001, I entered the Chiriba University, and at that time, about in 2002, when I was a freshman, uh, Chiba University started to uh, work on econ ecological programs. And that was when I was in the freshman. In 2003, October, I established the Student Council of ISO, and I was the first president. So, and then, um, when I graduated, I started working at the Recruit, which is a company which is not so related to ecology. Uh, I was working as uh, so I worked at a normal company and in 2013 the ISO Student Association had its 10th year and then I was called back as a panelist so When I went back to the Chiba University, I thought there there should be something that could be done more. So, so Miss uh, Professor Kurasaka had been taking care of the ISO Student Association, and and he had. He had told me that there was no one who would take care of the ISO Student Association afterwards. So I said, maybe I could do it. So I decided to quit working. Since it's since it's a, a country. So while I was working, I went into the graduate school of Chiba University and I I was able to earn my PhD and then I am working as a professor right now. So today I'll be explaining about what Chiba Daiga is doing. So I hope that a lot of people knows about Chiba University. There are 15,000 students, uh, 3,500 teachers, and there are 10 departments, both uh, science and hum humanities. The main campus is Nishichiba campus. Although Chiba Daigaku has been, oh wait, Chiba University has won Sustainable Campus Excellence Awards in Student Leadership category by the ISCN, and also has won awards from EAUC. And also ASCN Asia Sustainable Campus Network. These these were won because all of the programs were ran by the students. So the ISO acquisition process of Chiba University. So as I first explained, ISO Student Association was established. And then in the next year, we acquired ISO 14001 because it takes um, one year to for the group to be working as working for a year before I before we acquisition this. Fuck. In 2005, we gained ISO 
one five zero zero one. So ISO is International Organization for Standardization, and ISO fourteen zero zero one is specific in the requirement of the environment managing system, and ISO five zero zero one is specified in the requirements of the energy management system. So they've verified that the environment management system are properly run within the university. Please wait. So ISO 14001 was established in 1996. So first, Musashi Kogyo University had uh, been certified at 1998. Uh, this shows the numbers of certifications in Japanese university. Many has many university has got their certification since. So the certification needs to be continued once third years. So some universities quit being part of the certification sometime, but I'm not trying to say that it is correct or right to be certified by a ISO 1401. So one of my research is on what are the merits of acquiring ISO 1401. So some say that environmental load reduction uh, they had clean campuses, regulatory compliances, and also cost reduction were the merits. On the other hand, the, the large workload had been a problem because there were because the manual need to, to be created in order to go through the certification. Also, obtaining understanding and cooperation from faculty stock was difficult since university Also, getting the students to participate was difficult, and also the continuation. In addition, a uh, budget was necessary to maintain the certification. However, in Chile University, the, the university had decided to cover these demerits because these were won by the students. It has been 16 years since it's all started. So one of the one of the medium term goals, which is turned in by the university, the ISO 1401 is also included. Uh, the student community for EMS is supposed to participate to run this program and this is included in the annual plan. In addition to that, environmental and energy policy has to be updated as well every year. And this is this is kind of a pillar that shows the direction that the student organizations are working on. And again, um, it is put for the, the student-led um, structure is always uh, emphasized. And the student committee for EMS is the reason why students uh, st uh, uh, is, is the reason how the structure of student-centered um, structure uh, has been developed. Approximately 200 members are included, and all of them are students. And uh, the, these, these number of uh, students are divided into 20 groups and uh, this committee was launched in 2003. 
The student center, student led EMS is called Chiba University Method. And let me briefly introduce each characteristic of this student organization. The first characteristic is an official organization of the university. Therefore, every each role、uh, has been played by students. And the leadership is taken by president and vice presidents. And under these two,、uh, they are environmental managers. And this function called ISO Planning Committee. This structure is under the president and vice president, and get it from the direction from the top.、Um, they work on the concrete、uh, development of plannings or directions. And under these committees,、uh, there are four functions、uh, that is also divided、uh, that has division into four groups. And each group has got their own、uh, speciality. For example, en energy conservation leaders meeting, or implementation committee, and so on. Now, the second characteristics:、um, students plays core role in the university's EMS. In many other universities,、um, except for、uh, Chiba University,、uh, all of these、um, ISO projects are maintained or developed by、uh, university staff. However, in Chiba University method, students、uh, play these kind of roles. They are each role for P D C A. Firstly,、uh, starting from the plans. It's a PDCA cycle that students are involved, and firstly,、uh, talking about plan, it's a making a draft of the environmental objectives and operation plans.、Um, there are a big number of aims and goals and action plans that are presented in the pres、uh, presentation slide. The originated plan is、uh, created by student, and it is it is proposed to the committee, and then、uh, once it is approved. It will be worked on on realization. There are EMS, EMS basic training happening in April and May, and these trainings is happening、uh, for each grade year or each grade or department students. And also for professors or university staffs,、uh, there's a special、uh, training pro、uh, program for、uh, professors or, or teachers. And as part of do actually doing the activities,、uh, there are a wide range of environmental activities, ecological awareness raising activities,、uh, reuse or recycling activities. And it is session three. The details will be presented by our, our, un our university students from Chiba University. And apart from、uh, in college、uh, student activities, there are some other pro program that is going on in outside of campus. Like for example, co in cooperation with、uh, other companies. Student actually, for example, student actually go abroad and、uh, make a presentation about Chiba University method or activities、um, programs that goes on、uh, that goes on in the home university. In the next part, annual EMS internal auditor program is going on. And again,、uh, in Chiba University, students are actually included in this、uh, auditoring activity.
since uh, Chibi University population is quite a big one, more than a few, a few numbers of students are involved, and they make presentations about all auditing uh, toward uh, deans of the uh, deans of universities. And apparently, it's more has got more a uh, bigger impact for university staff uh, to be being um, observed and checked by students uh, compared to other university staffs. So it's creating kind of a big impact in uh, in in the college. Finally, is the checking part. There's an editing uh, program over the environmental report. It is a legal requirement that. The universities has to create this kind of report and publish it annually. And of, of course, some uh, university staffs are involved. But again, the core part, the interviewing and um, writing down, publishing, all this process has been carried out by students themselves. And it, it has been started from 2004. And we have changed the name from environmental report to sus sustainability report. And about A, we revised the management manual, and that is also done by students. And in order to assess whether we can continue the ISO one, uh, ISO, we have students who assess the program and students who manage the program again. And in the very right, we have uh, Professor Kurasaka, and with him are the students who are assessing the external ISO. And whenever they have trouble finding a document, uh, they he just asks the students, and the student comes to pick it up. And the student committee also becomes part of the assessment, so it is very good. And are the students doing it for free, or are they volunteers? But the most the biggest characteristic about this is that they get credits for doing this kind of assessment and this being involved in this uh, activity. First, they do the EMS practicum one and then practicum two. And when you do that for your first and second year, uh, from your third year, uh, you keep on doing it, and then you get credits for what you've done. For freshmen, you learn EMS in business schools, and you learn the basics of the EMS, and you learn how to assess as well. Then you get training from, for the assessment as well. There are also classes on the business aspects, such as writing emails, how to become a leader, and how to manage meetings as well. And when you become a sophomore, you learn, you use what you have learned and try to become team leaders. You learn how to write uh, actual documents and you become group leaders and try to progress what your group is doing. When you become a junior, there is a practicum three, and it, it is not actually mandatory. And what they do here is that they get involved with the people outside of the school and give advice or give give um, talk about what they want to do to those people in the businesses. So you learn practical work and also uh, hands-on work in order to learn how to 
handle and manage these things. One project was um, picking up leaves and using that as uh, as compost and by being becoming the group leader you can learn how to be a leader in those organizations and once you finish the program you get this kind of certificate by the president of the school and this becomes something that you can write when you are looking for jobs and you can p write that in your resume and you can talk about that when you are doing your interview and we, in we did a survey on the reasons for joining the student committee and 66.5% had an interest in environmental pro problems and 56.2% was to get a credit 40% were to acquire practical skills and the practical skills included things like writing emails and talking with people from businesses and there are other options or such as making friends and these are the kinds of things uh, the students looked for in the student committee the fourth thing is that uh, the fourth point is that it also acts as an MPO the student committee is also is inside of the university but is is also an NPO organization and it was certified in 2009 in session 3 the president of the NPO division is here so we'll have her talk about that later so by doing by having the students working in the Chief by University method we can uh, run the PDCA cycle within the students we cannot only ask students to do things so what is it that the university and faculty staff do for this kind of system of course when we have students work for these environmental issues but of course we need to we need as a university to cooperate with the students we have dedicated staff at university and we have a budget of approximately 9.5 million yen most of them uh, assessment expenses and also student transportation and other activity fees and we have a room for student committee so for this student committee room we have we equipped a whiteboard that no any, anyone can write down something on and also they ha they can have a lunch meeting in this room so that we need to create a space for the students to work together and also the equipment such as PCs and also as I mentioned earlier the support from instructors and professors I, uh, Krasak, Mr. Krasaka and I are mainly working together with the students to support them adding to the, the things that the only professors can do so the internal auditing cannot be conducted only by students uh, you know maybe the professors will talk them into something with the sweet words so for the internal auditing we visit more than 100 professors and we bring 70 to 80 students and also the 70 to 80 professors and teachers from university together so this system has four benefits that I called four E benefits the first is of course the reduction of environmental load and cost when we look at the energy input so 2000 and whole which was way before we got accreditation as an ISO but for the first three years actually the energy input dropped 
I think a lot of universities and companies, they all had this kind of a phenomenon after getting accreditation as an ISA, ISO. So some of the companies and institutions actually stopped applying for the further continuation of accreditation. And 2010 was the year that we have a very, very hot summer. And in 2011, we had, of course, March 11, and there was an energy serving system. And we hadn't really seen a very significant change, but we actually reduced the energy by 6.6%, and also the water by 62.5%. <laughs> We might get questioned why did you why were you using so much water? But the national university cannot use utilize the water because we were actually we got budget for water from the from Japan as a nation. We had a system to actually identify the water leakage or we put stickers on restrooms and all these small activities actually led to the re reduction in water usage. And we reduced general waste by more than 50%. We started the paper recycling. These are the benefits in the environmental size. When it comes to energy serving, surely we saved about 140 million yen per year in energy, including water and electricity, compared to before getting accreditation as an ISO, ISA. And also it has hands-on educational benefit. So these these are the surveys conducted to the graduate students of ISO members, committee members. So a student committee activities help you in your career and more than 80% answered that they were very helpful or somewhat helpful. In detail, they answered that they were able to acquire the skills that would be required in business scenes like communication or writing emails and making documents. So they were not very hesitant to do these skills because they actually experienced it when they were students. And also the team building skills or some uh, energy to achieve something as a team. And also taking a leadership was also a very skillful and experiment. So when actually you graduate from university, you first start from a just normal company worker. But if you are a member of this kind of student committee, you will of course need to serve as a leader and you will receive information from your seniors. And if you are a member of an NPO, the NPO has more than 100, 200 members. And these are all divided into different departments and groups. And under these groups, more, even the smaller subgroups, we need to manage all of that. So taking leadership in this kind of NGO can greatly help students even after they graduate. And even when they make mistakes as a student, because they are a student, they don't really need to take a full responsibility because they are doing it in college. So they're actually the ones that will take responsibilities, uh, professors, teachers, including me. And also, the, it has impact on society. Like when it comes to social impact, all the international hours. And also climate changing hours in Japan, given by the Minister of Education in Japan. And also environmental communication award which actually praised the reports that we published as a committee, which also led to the high popularity of Chiba University. So these are the four e-benefits that I'm talking about. And uh, we got ISO accreditation in 2005 and this system called the Chiba University Method 
actually it's spreading to different universities, including Mie University that started in 2007 and also the same kind of project started in 2010 in Iwari University. This kind of knowledge is spreading and shared among different teachers and professors, students. What Chiba University, what makes Chiba University very different from these other universities? Uh, that we give credits to students so that it's kind of part of the class or lectures, but in other universities like Mie and Iwate, they are not directly given as a credits, but they are uh, different classes told and also they, they are very related to these kind of environmental issues. And also Totori Environmental University and Senshu University, they are starting to have this kind of project. So last year we established a Japan Student Environmental Management Network. There is no host university, but its head office is in University of Chiba. So if you are interested, please, uh, here's the contact information, so please give us some emails. Or we established this network in collaboration with Chiba University of Commerce. So we held this contest for student environmental ISO contest. So the older students who are engaged in environmental issues related projects can communicate with each other. But there are fewer and fewer uni universities that are applying for ISO, environmental ISOs, so that we can create a network. And also we have this annual meeting at Chiba University last year. The next year we'll be having it at Tottori Environmental University. So to wrap up, we have a system called the Chiba University Method. It is important. The first, it is important to have a committee as an official organization of the university. This is not a small teacher teacher led student group or a club activity, because it can make students less motivated to actually get engaged in the project. The second, it is important to have it as a core role in the university's EMS so the students can take initiatives in doing these projects so that they can learn different skills and also the teachers can reduce their burdens. And the third important point is the accreditation and qualification. So it can work as an incentive for students to get involved in any type of project. I think it is okay for students to engage in this project because they can credits. Maybe you can get an easy A. They might not be interested in environmental issues, but they can engage in it because they want to get an A. And they can make friends and they can take leadership eventually when they become junior or senior. These kind of cases I have seen a lot. Like even when we simply say that we are doing this kind of activities, we cannot have incentives. So, of course, giving credits can work this way. So it can be one of the advantages. So that they just start doing it for a credit, but they eventually get interested in environmental issues. It's such a great thing. And a fourth important point is that the committee also acts as an LPO and the president or the board members, chairs, are students so that they can learn about the procedures to how to get accreditation. So we are giving students a learning opportunities. So what I would like to highlight at the end is uh, from what I learned from studying and working at university, Chiba University, I believe that students have the power and potential to organize and manage these EMS. So what do we need to do as a university? 
Of course, the university, as one of their main, main guidelines, that they need to clearly explain that these organizations are student led or student centered, and the university can establish this kind of organization, having motivation creating system, like giving credits. It depends, it changes depending on the type of university, but giving credit is one way. And also, the university can provide opportunities or hands on experiences to students when they do actually want to try out something. In Chiba University, when a student wants to do something, that she or he can write a proposal and submit it to the university. And if it passes, they can, of course, try it out at university. And the faculty members and the other students. And of course, we need to have budget to support the actual realization of that proposal. In the university, ISO student committee is very well known inside the Chiba University, so that any professor or stu student teacher can help getting engaged in. So the important thing is that the students who are engaged in this project can see the advantages of doing it. Like maybe having making more than 200 friends within college or learning skills and getting credits. And to make it sustainable, the Chiba University or university itself needs to see the value of the impact that EMS has on university. When the university says no, of course, we cannot really sustain this EMS. So myself, as a professor, I work on media coverage and apply for different hours and for students so that even the people outside of our university can see the value of this EMS. Any other people outside of our college can evaluate this EMS. So appealing to the other people is very important. This was brief, but thank you for listening.